What's up everybody, it's your boy Nate. Today we are diving into a brand new feature that just came out. It's an awesome AI model that allows you to control camera movements much like you would if you were a director for a movie scene. That's right, we're talking about Haluo's brand new director mode. And this is what it looks like when you first pull it up. So you're gonna notice that we have image to video, text to video and subject reference, which we've talked about in the past on the channel, but they just came out with this new feature for text to video, which is the new director mode feature right here. And it's super simple to set up. So we're gonna be diving into this new feature, showing you where it excels and what it struggles on. That way you can make an informed decision as to whether or not this is gonna help you in your creative work. First thing I wanna bring up is a huge caveat of this tool, which is that it does not work for image to video or subject reference mode. So if you guys are hoping to be able to use this by importing in a photo and then having the camera orbit around whatever your subject is inside of that photo, it's not gonna work there. But if you did have an idea for a text to video where it's just fully based on a text prompt, you are gonna be able to make some pretty awesome scenes using this. But yeah, just know that you're not able to use it with any other mode at the moment. So we were able to create some pretty sick looking scenes here. And one thing that I wanna stress to you guys is that having a consistent camera motion, like this orbiting motion around a subject or an environment actually helps a lot when it comes to editing because we're able to create things like match on action or match on movement shots just by having in the same camera movement and by switching up the prompt. So as you can see here, we have this war scene taking place where it orbits around these soldiers and we have these different tanks and explosions and things like that. And it actually feels like a cohesive edit already if I just cut through the different scenes without having to do too much. And that's all thanks to the fact that it has this consistent camera motion following you and really driving this action home. Another really cool thing about this is that we're not just limited to orbiting camera movements, but we can also do some pretty complicated scenes. Like for example, this one in which we have a zoom out and also a push in at the same time, almost mimicking a very subtle dolly zoom effect. Yeah, I gotta say this one came out really nice and really cinematic. So here are some of the examples that we made earlier, which for its more technical understanding, it's called trucking right, panning left, tracking shot with a little bit of shake. But if that sounds like way too complicated to remember, don't worry because you don't have to remember that at all. Instead, what you can do is when you go over to the text to video section, you're gonna see this little camera icon in the bottom corner here, right next to where it says prompt enhance. And if you click on this, you're gonna be able to see the different options for controlling your camera movements. Now, using the free selection mode, you're able to connect three different camera movements together. So for example, you can do a truck left, a pan left, and a push in. But once I start to click on zoom in, it's not gonna let me use that fourth camera motion. Another thing that you can do instead of being able to select these ones here is that you can click on the cinematic shots section. And this one has a combination of different camera movements. So if you're curious how we were able to make those really awesome scenes from earlier where it's just orbiting around a subject and really showcasing the environment, I was using the right circling effect right here, which you can see it starts to insert in these for the camera, which is the truck right pan left tracking shot. So let's go ahead and test this out and see how well this works. So I'm gonna use this with a new prompt that's gonna be for a car on a rooftop. And let's actually make it a high angle one. And then we're gonna go ahead and take a look at how this came out. Okay, so here we have an example, which is a camera orbits around a blue Lamborghini parked on a rooftop in a city. The sun rises and sets in the background in a time lapse and the lighting shines off the car. The shadows shift with the rising sun and the setting sun. And I also put in a couple extra hashtags here for fast motion, 8K and cinematic. Now I gotta say, this looks pretty awesome. And if it was just a little bit cleaner, we might be able to use this for something like 3D Gaussian splatting, but it's not bad for its first attempt at this. So I even went ahead and tried it with a couple other scenarios. And this one definitely got more of the city inside of the background, but we have something weird going on in the beginning of it. And then for this other example, this one looks pretty consistent all throughout as it's moving that camera around this Lamborghini. Let's say if we wanted to switch the cars out with something that's like a 1950s inspired car, this also works pretty well for this example. Now, again, because we're using this consistent camera motion, we can cut between these two and it feels like it's a part of the same cinematic universe. Now, I did try this out again with that 1950s car and we started to get some weird wonky motion. So 
Another thing to note about using this tool and just about any AI video tool is that they don't typically come out with the perfect results all the time. In fact, you may see that maybe three out of every five results is good and that leaves you with about two results which you're just like, dang it, why did I even spend any money or use any of the credits on this? And I really do wish that in the future they allow users to be able to rank which generations did not come out so good and just refund them that credit because there's a whole bunch of generations that I'm pretty sure people are making that they're not really satisfied with. Now, going back to some of the other cinematic scenes, these ones came out much, much better than those other generations. But again, the prompt for these is enormous. So if I was to show you this really quickly, this example from this prompt, it is extremely long. I can't even read it to you because yeah, this one would take forever to read, but basically by using this prompt in a bunch of different scenarios, we're able to get this cinematic war scene where it traverses a bunch of different areas and environments from using a cloud-based or in the sky warfare scene and then a jungle-based one and even one that came out underwater. And all of these, I gotta say, looked very awesome. And this is probably where Halo shines the most is in creating these almost fantasy-like elements and scenes. Now, I wanted to show you guys a quick comparison between their older model and one that we're using for this newest director mode. So with their older model, we were able to generate this scene here on the right-hand side, which does not have any camera motion applied to it besides what's already inside of the prompt. So at the beginning of the prompt, it says the camera follows a determined female warrior's eyes. And again, for both of these prompts, left and right, they're gonna be exactly the same, except the only difference is that on the left-hand side, we have now this camera motion added to it. And I gotta say, it ends up making a pretty cinematic looking scene, though both of these ended up coming out very nicely. Now, here is another variation of that generation in which we now have that camera rotating around the subject with the trucking right, panning left, tracking shot. And this one also came out really awesome as well. So it does show that you're able to use the same prompt for some of those generations that you may have liked in the past and then just add in a bit of those camera movements through the director mode and you get instantly another scene or another edit that you can apply to your AI generated films. And then we also tried it with this ornate interior, which just has a lot more details, really to see if we're able to create something using gauge and splatting. But again, this one did not orbit all the way around as much as we would have liked, though it does get a lot of that camera motion and some of this would be usable. If you were though to look extra into some of the details, you may notice some artifacting happening here and over here as well, which means it's not gonna be working perfectly for Gaussian splatting. But as one of our viewers has commented, this tech is probably the worst it's gonna be right now and it's only gonna get better from here. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy creating using this brand new tool. If you guys make something super awesome, link it down below. And if you have not messed around using AI video before, I highly recommend you check out this short trailer that we made using entirely AI generated scenes. And we also did a breakdown showing just how we were able to create things like myself in any of the scenes, as well as being able to add in different sound effects and voices and a whole lot more. So make sure you guys go ahead and check that out. Anyways, hope to catch you in the next one. Until next time, all right, peace.